Hello and welcome. My name is Shail Carson and I'm on the board of ICAB, the International Conciliation and Arbitration Board. Today is October the 15th and this is Conflict Resolution Day. Each year on this day we promote awareness of mediation, arbitration and other peaceful means of resolving conflicts, whether they're family, commercial, in communities or otherwise. Next week is Mediation Week and we will be hosting a series of conversations on faith, ethics and conflict, conflict in families and much more. But today I am delighted to be joined by Zuli Suchadina, Chair of ICAB. Zuli is first and foremost a lawyer and a human rights advocate. For 18 years she was Vice President, Human Resources and General Counsel at Providence Healthcare in Canada, representing marginalised and vulnerable communities. She is a governor of the Law Foundation of British Columbia and teaches health law at the University of British Columbia. And she recently completed her LLM in Global Health Law and International Institutions at Georgetown Law Centre in Washington, DC, and the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva, Switzerland. She's also the first female chair of the Ismaili International Conciliation and Arbitration Board. ICAB provides oversight to 19 national conciliation and arbitration boards around the world. Hears arbitration appeals from the national boards, issues policy guidance and coordinates the delivery of mediation training programs to over 800 volunteers providing dispute resolution services to the Ismaili community. Zuli has also served in board and leadership positions on many international organisations and has been the recipient of the Odd Award. Welcome Zuli and thank you for joining me today. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to our conversation. So thank you for joining me today on Conflict Resolution Day. So 2020 has been a very challenging year for all of us. Mediation Week is a global project, but conflict itself is. Absolutely. Um, when we think about disagreements in life, that th those are natural ways in which we grow and evolve and develop. So disagreements in themselves are part of our ongoing experience of living. But conflict, particularly when it's not managed, not resolved, eats away at one's absolute essence and sense of soul. It is one of the most painful experiences that individuals can have. And throughout our history, we've had ways in which we deal with that just because we all recognize how painful it is and how destructive it is for everyone, not just the family or the business, but more importantly, the person who is experiencing it at that time. I recall an individual telling me that what was so painful about his experience of conflict was the fact that he didn't have a peace of mind to even pray in peace. It's that level of of intrusion into one's sense of peace that is so destructive and which is why we really focus on people getting to the point where they come forward to, re to uh, resolve their conflicts for themselves as much as it is for the others around them. It's a very personal, absolutely personal experience. And when we've seen in the work that we have done, you know, across the world, it's a very difficult situation when you find yourself in conflict. And although we try to be as impartial as we possibly can, and we try to step in the shoes of the other person, there is a tendency, a human tendency almost, to create what we would call the other. Uh, indeed, indeed. That's the starting point. So. As human beings, I think it's part of our evolutionary history, 
we are so much more attuned to a negative comment, a negative experience. And we are well armed with being able to recognize an insult, recognize a fact of, of, uh, of displeasure. Um, it's it's not surprising. It's our evolutionary history. If you if you don't recognize danger, you're going to be lunch for some hyena. So it's important that we recognize that. Uh, so negative experiences we are much more attuned to. The second thing we do again, I think, as human experience, is that we ascribe to ourselves a much more generous attitude to conflict than to the other. And in part, it's because we hear the dialogue that's happening within ourselves. And so we don't mean to hurt the, per uh, the other person. They did get hurt, but our intention wasn't to hurt them. And so we are able to give ourselves the level of slack that we don't give to others. When we judge other people's conduct towards us, it's always, she intended to hurt my feelings. That was a intended outcome that happened. And it's that change in ways in which we, we, we give ourselves flexibility, a greater level of generosity perhaps, than we extend to other people, especially those others who are in conflict with us. And what is sometimes very sad about that is, is that that experience or that way of, of thinking about it almost devalues all of the positive experiences of people's lives. So you could have had a 15-year great friendship and it ends on a sour note. And it's the, that sour note that you will remember, not the 15 years of great experiences, great holidays, great expectations, and wonderful times that you've spent with each other. It's that last session that stays in your heart and your mind because it's a negative experience. And it really colors the whole experience of living, unfortunately. Yeah. And you say, unfortunately, and I, and I totally agree with you, but there are so many situations in which conflict is actually a positive thing, right? So you sometimes have to go through that conflict in order to be able to better assess what you want, who you are, what you need, and how to improve your relationships with other people. And that usually starts from within, you know, and in terms of looking at ourselves and how we deal with conflict and how we can better understand ourselves. I feel a lot of people don't necessarily, you know, myself included, understand ourselves sufficiently um, before we um, are dealing with, with conflict with other people. So from your experience, how can we, what, what kind of things could we do on a personal level that would transform ourselves first and then ultimately our relationships? You know, when we think about conflict, it's sort of two elements to that, right? The first part of it is to be aware of how easy it is to escalate a, a situation and how easy it is for something to be destroyed than something to be built. And we see that in our circumstances all around the world, in our personal relationships, uh, in the way the world is happening and, and what's happening to our, to our uh, you know, the world at, at large right now. So this sense of being careful about, about not overreacting uh, mm -hmm. so that we don't escalate a situation uh, that may otherwise get, get out of hand. So there are a number of ways of dealing with it. The first part of it is this, you know, I always find Hazramam's mm -hmm. conversations about pluralism very helpful because we tend to think of pluralism as, you know, I'm static and other people is, is who I am respecting and acknowledging and, and so on. But within ourselves, there are levels of plurality and multiplicity mm -hmm. and options that are available to us mm -hmm. as we are confronted with a particular situation. A trick I always use or try to use as often as I can is to ask myself, 
what explanation would there be if I had said whatever the other person has said or done what the other person has done? And just that moment of thinking about it means you're not reacting out of anger, not reacting immediately, and not escalating a process. Mm -hmm. So that context of being able to extend to others the generosity we extend to ourselves is a great place to start. And then to be looking at saying, how many options are available here? What else could be the explanation for this particular thoughtless remark that someone just made? That those are the kinds of things that one can do ahead of time. So we don't end up with situations where we are destroying things we don't want to be destroying. And then there are times when a relationship is frayed, a relationship has been broken, and we're needing to talk about rebuilding. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we are social beings. We are, we, and, and I think this COVID situation has really alerted us to how much we miss that social interaction with each other. We are definitely programmed that way. And so as human beings, we are, we are, we gravitate towards rebuilding because as I said earlier, the pain of conflict is deep within our hearts and, our, and, and we need to heal those broken hearts. So through that conflict kind of management and assessment processes, we transform, of course. And I find the, uh, the analogy and the metaphor that comes from the, uh, the, the art, the Japanese art of Kintsuji, really powerful in, in this way. And so this is a, a form of art where a broken piece of pottery, a broken glass, a broken vase is put together painstakingly with gold lacquer or platinum or silver. And it, it signifies the attention being paid to that part which is broken. And then the piece is put delicately on the area where it is broken. And one of the things about that is that you have to hold it that, that piece in place for a very, very long period of time until it sets. Because mm -hmm. if you don't let it set, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. And you have to let it set very, very carefully. So you have to hold that with your fingers for a long period of time. And then you have to let it dry, dry well before you add the second piece on that. And in the end, you have an incredible vase which has highlighted all of the places where it was broken, but it ends up being even more beautiful than it started out. It's almost a, a kind of visual re uh, representation of how the entire process of living, the conflicts that we come up with, the resolutions we deal with, create for ourselves a way of transforming into being even more beautiful, even more lived, well-loved and well-lived. Uh, that's the kind of process that happens. And that, part of conflict resolution for us is this analysis of saying, what was my part in breaking this? How did I contribute to that? And that makes us go away from that, that either or situation. You know, I'm good, you're bad. I'm right, you're wrong. To this sense of how did this happen? How did I break this this vase? Did it break because I grabbed it and smashed it into a hundred different pieces and out of a fit of anger, or did it just slip through my fingers as an accident? And sometimes that happens as well. And so that process of building it together, coming back to putting it together is an important part of the, of the transformation that takes place as we deal with conflicts. Now, I wanna say that that is 
also an individual, even if the relationship is completely broken, irretrievably broken, you're never going to be the best of friends again, business partners again, spouses again. The, the part of healing oneself and healing one's own broken heart in that whole process is an important part of conflict resolution. So we're not here to talk about you know, putting it back in the way it used to be, because sometimes you just cannot go back to what it used to be. But working towards a new way of being is in itself a level of transformation. And you can end up having dealt with conflict, a more beautiful and well put together individual than when we started. And that's part of the process of resolution along the way. Yeah, you've put that absolutely beautifully. And, you know, the sort of the whole concept of it, you know, being more beautiful, having been broken and having an understanding because you're, you know, you're quite right. Things don't go back to the way they were because things have been altered and things may be better and they may be stronger and you may be more careful of where because now you can see where the cracks had formed and now you can see the time that you have spent in order to heal those cracks and also within yourself you are kinder to yourself one would hope as much as you are kind to the other but this is a very challenging process and it is a process that needs to take its time and so impatience is always a difficult thing when you're in conflict because you want to rush through this and you want this to be over with as quickly as possible. But relationships, particularly in communities, are long-standing relationships. So it's really important to make sure we have the sufficient degree of patience to work with things in order for those to heal in the same way that you need to be patient if you're healing your own physical body or, your, or a bone, for example. But it's not always possible um, most of the time it isn't possible to do this work, to do, do this difficult work by yourself because you don't necessarily have that perspective of how to fix that problem when you're in it. And so it's really important to be able to get and seek counsel from a friend or professionally um, in order to help you resolve that dispute. And I think that's really where you know, the NCAB, the CAB system comes in. Exactly, exactly. I always tend to think of this, um, and whether it's a friend or whether it's an NCAB, whether it's any other resource that one seeks, as, as someone who helps you expand your vista, expand the, uh, the, the, the opportunities that you can see, often, and especially when we're in stress, we tend to only see exactly what's in front of us. And the advantage of being able to bring someone else into the picture, the and, and certainly the the uh, the distance from uh, a family member or a friend who is incredibly loyal to you uh, is important. Uh, a friend is certainly a great place to start at very first, but occasionally and most often you do need someone who has a little bit of distance from that relationship, who is able to give you perspective so that you can see what's in the periphery of your vision. It's in the periphery of your vision that options come up, examples come up and ways in which you can address a situation emerge from the periphery. And being able to expand your horizons and see solutions which you didn't see before is one of the benefits of, of seeking assistance from the conciliation arbitration boards, from a personal therapist, whatever it is that, and however it is that you're going to be seeking that support. It's being able to see what is in the horizons, expanding your options of, of, and choices. Because in the end, you cannot outsource this work to anyone else. As much as people can help you, and certainly the conciliation and arbitration boards, that's our, that's our business, that's our mandate, that's, the, that's our service, that's what we've been entrusted to do for the Jamaat. We can assist 
but we cannot bear someone's pain. We cannot fix it for that. That work has to be done by individuals who are right there in the process of doing and of living that life. But being able to give them options, being able to expand that horizon is what really makes it possible for people to move to the next stage of transformation. And that's what's really critically important. Yeah. And also seeing that it's, a you know, the beginning and then the process you have to go through and then how you come out the other side and then how you heal those relationships going forward. Indeed. Is there anything else that you would like to share today on Conflict Resolution Day or something that you think that we should think about or that, um, you know, you want a message that you want to put out to everybody? Well, I do think it's very important that we don't let things fester. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, you know, people know stuff is wrong, <laughs> their relationship, they need to be doing something, but it's put off or other insults get added onto that. And by the time that one is seeking assistance, it's a relationship mm -hmm. that has become irretrievably lost in some ways or very, very difficult to heal. I would hate for us to use the term irretrievable in, because there are always examples of, of, of enormous generosity that people come to, to, the, to the process with. But to the extent possible, I think it's important that we deal with this as part of relationship management on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and to seek help before it becomes so difficult that there is so much under under the bridge to have to re, you know to have to deal with and process so that would be my my other uh, message to the jamaat is to say uh, even during these covid periods in time there are ways into to reach out we're doing work through through uh, online uh, mediations uh, we're able to to pick up the phone and talk to people, do whatever needs to be done so you're not putting things off that should be fixed today for tomorrow. Absolutely. And that's such sound advice. And I know that that would be a lot for people to think about and to know and to feel the comfort that, you know, there is there is an institution there that is there to help them with resolving their conflicts and, and helping them live you know, better lives and more peaceful lives. So on Conflict Resolution Day today, Zuby, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a wonderful conversation. So as I mentioned earlier, next week is Mediation Week and the theme is Access to Justice. During this difficult, challenging time that we have found ourselves in 2020, it is even more important that we find other ways to resolve disputes without resorting to formal processes and means such as litigation. We are going to be talking about different aspects of mediation and dispute resolution. We will be discussing ethics and faith and, and how ethics and faith underpin the way in which we resolve conflicts within our community. We will be talking about community, we'll be talking about um, conflicts within families, we'll be talking about our international projects, we'll talk, be talking about cultural conflict as well. So join us next week for a series of conversations. Thank you very much and yalla